Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to give you an introduction to SQL, SQL, Structured Query Language. The official way to pronounce it is SQL and it's a way of accessing relational databases. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now we're all familiar with the concept of a list. Here I have a list of three names, Gary Sims, Peter Davidson and John Pertwee. Now this is a very, very simple way of storing information. You can do it on a piece of paper, you can do it in a document, really, really simple. Now a database really is just a glorified version of a list. What do I mean by that? Well, if we see the same list here, Gary Sims, uh, Smith, Matt, Baker, Tom, and Tenant David. Okay, you can see that I've divided them up into surname and first name. On a normal list, you just have kind of Gary Sims. Here I've split it up into surname and first name, and I've also added an extra piece of information where that person was born. Now, when you put it in that format, you've got more than just a list. You've got a you've got a set of data that is uh, some people plus their birth date. Now that information like that is called a table. And across the table, you have rows. So Sims Gary London is one row, Smith Matt Northampton is another row, Baker Tom Liverpool is another row. And these are here are called columns. So, you, so surname is a column, first name is a column, and born is a column. Now that is a very, very simple table and databases store tables like this and they store the columns and the rows of those tables. Now, once you have a table in that format, there are lots of different things you can do. Obviously, you can create it to start with, then you can insert a row into that table, you could delete a row from the table, you could change a row, modify it, you want to change one of the uh, columns in that row, and also, of course, you can find rows in the table related to different bits of conditions, uh, whether it matches a certain condition or not. Now, a database uh, technically has many tables. I suppose you could have a database with one table, but normally there are many, many tables. And in a relational database, those tables have some relationships between them. So they're kind of linked together via a special form of relationship, which we will look at uh, much later on in the video. Now, there are many SQL database uh, engines and servers available. MySQL is a very famous open source one that's often used for websites with Linux and with PHP and so on. Of course, Microsoft have a SQL server, the Microsoft SQL server. Oracle, very, very big database business uh, available also with, with a SQL uh, interface to it. Postgres is another open source uh, SQL uh, server. And then there's SQLite or SQLite. And that's what we're going to be using today. And the reason I want to use SQLite is because it's open source. It's used by Android. That makes it the most used database engine in the entire world. Think about all those millions and millions of Android devices out there. But the, here's the important thing for us today, it's serverless. You don't need to set up a server and then a client and have the client connect to the server over some kind of network connection. And you have to authenticate with a username and a password and you have to have the right permissions. SQL Lite, SQL Lite really just is a very simple, it uses just files and you say, create a database with this file name and it just does it there and then with that file. So it's really easy to get up and running and to show how uh, SQL works. Now we'll move on from our list of people and we've got here a bit more of a complicated table. So this is a, a mini database of some smartphones. And as you can see, if we look at the uh, columns here, we've got the name of the manufacturer, the model, the website for the manufacturer, where the manufacturer is based, the process of the calls, GPU, RAM, storage, OS, and the display size. Those are all the columns. And then in the rows, we've got some actual phones. So OnePlus 7, OnePlus.net, it's uh, in China, it's got the Snapdragon 855, eight cores and so on. And here I've got this mini database of different phones from OnePlus, Google and uh, Huawei. Now to create that table, here we are now introduced to our first bit of SQL. So you type it, your SQL is create table, and then you give it the table name. So we're gonna say create table smartphones. And then you define what it is. And it's basically the name OEM. If you notice that here, let's have a look at this OEM and model. If we go back a slide, you'll see that it's here. 
OEM and model. Okay, and then we can look at the other ones, you know, cores, GPU. Those are all things that you find here in this table. These are all the columns that I've created. And then the second thing before the comma, so you give the name, then you give it the type. Now, uh, SQLite has got some very, very primitive types, basically text, integer, and real. Now, bigger, more complicated SQL servers have more you know, nuanced and complicated types, but SQLite is great in that it just gives you some basic types, text, integer, and so on. And so here we're saying that the OEM is a text, that the model is text, that the website is text, that the HQ is text, that the processor is text, but here's the first one, the cores, the number of cores it has is an integer, and then the rest are text except for the RAM is an integer, and then the display size is real, because it's you know normally listed as the diagonal in inches, you know, 6.5 inches or whatever. So we're using real, a floating point number, a number with a decimal point in it for the display size. So you basically create the table, it's called smartphones, and then you just list all those columns, the name and the type, the name and the type, the name and the type, separated by commas. Really, really easy, just looks a bit complicated when you see it first of all. So what we're gonna do now is go over to my Raspberry Pi and we're gonna create that table inside of an SQL uh, SQLite database. So here I am on my Raspberry Pi and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up SQLite which is basically a program that you can install if it's not already installed. And it has a command line program called uh, SQLite 3. And we're gonna create a database just called smartphones.db. That gives you this command line. And literally we just type in that command, create table smartphones and all the stuff I talk about talked about in the previous slide and we hit enter and that's it now there's not much else going to happen at this point because we've just created a table and of course there's nothing in it it's an empty table so let's go back to our slides and see what we need to learn next so the next thing we need to do is insert some data into that uh, table and you do that using the insert into command insert into smartphones that's the name of our table values and then here is just the list of the values. You don't need to give it the column name. It knows that they are there in order. So one plus seven, one plus dot net, Shenzhen, Snapdragon 855, and so on. And as you can see here, when we're using, for example, the real number, it's just a number. There's no quote marks around it. It's 6.41. So let's go and insert that row now into our database. So there is the uh, command, and now all we do is hit enter. And again, it doesn't show us anything, but we now know there is one uh, row in that uh, database. In fact, what I have here is all the uh, information we need for all of the rows. So there you have all of the OnePlus 6T, the Pixel 3, Pixel 3a, the P30 Pro, and the Mate 20 Pro. And I'm quickly just gonna go now and uh, stick those into our database so that we now have a fully populated database. And so there we have it, they have now all been inserted. No errors have come up, but we don't see anything in the database yet because we haven't learned how to query or look at the database. So let's go back to see what's next. Now to get information out of a database, to query it, use this command select. In other words, select some rows. And what it's saying here, star means every single column. Select every single column from smartphones. Well, that's a pretty easy command. Select star from smartphones will basically dump the whole database. So let's, let's just try that. So select star from smartphones and you have to put a colon at the a semicolon at the end. That's the syntax. And there we have it. Now that's dumped out all that data. And there is a vertical bar here between every field showing you where one column starts and the other column ends. And we can list here all of those um, different uh, rows that we added in. But we can also reduce not just star, we can actually say, actually just give me the OEM and the model from smartphones. So select OEM model from smartphones. That's just gonna show us the OEM and the model columns. So that gives us a bit of a, a nicer output. So if we type that in now, select OEM uh, model from smartphones with a semicolon at the end. And there we go. Now we can see in our database, we've got the OnePlus 7, the OnePlus 6T, the Google Pixel 3, the Google Pixel 3a, the Huawei P30 Pro and the Huawei Mate 20. And that's a much easier list to read there. So you get information out of the database using the select command. 
and the select command can be a bit more complicated. So we could say here, select the OEM and the model. So just give us the OEM and the model number from smartphones where, so this is how you put a condition on it now, where, only if, where the display size is greater than six inches. So let's have a look which phones have a display size greater than six inches in our database. So here we are with our command, select OEM model from smartphones where display size is greater than six, and also with a semicolon at the end. And there you go, we can see the OnePlus 7, the OnePlus 6T, the, and the two Huawei's both fulfill that condition, whereas the two Pixel phones I put in were not the XL versions, they were the normal smaller versions, so they do not qualify for this command. And we can do a similar thing here where we can say where the processor is a Snapdragon. Now, notice what we've got here. This like thing says where the processor, because it's a string, contains the word snap. And what you do is you say like is similar to, and then in a SQL, the percent sign is a kind of a wild card. So anything before, anything after the word, the letter snap. So basically, if it's got the letter, the word snap in the title of the processor, it will be okay for our query. So here we are again, let's type in that command, like snap contains the string snap basically. And there we have it. So we can see that the two OnePlus devices and the two Google devices all use Snapdragon devices, Snapdragon 855, 845, and the 670. Whereas the Huawei device, of course, are using the Kirin processors, so they are not listed here. And similarly the same, we could say where the RAM is equal to four gigabytes. So let's just try that one. So there's our command where RAM is equal to four, and there we can see the two Pixel devices have been listed. So hopefully from that you can see that you can query from the database anything you want based on whether the string or the numbers are greater than, equal to, less than, similar to, whatever. There's a whole way of just querying the database to get out certain bits of information. Now there are two other things I mentioned earlier on you can do, you can delete from the table. So here delete from smartphones where RAM is equal to four, that would basically remove the two Google devices. And update is allow, is allows you to change a row. So update smartphone set processor equal to K90, uh, K980, sorry, where processor is equal to Kirin 980. So wherever the processor is equal to the Kirin 980, it will change that processor to be K980. Now we won't run those two commands, but they're there for your information to see how you can delete things from the table and how you can change columns, individual uh, columns and fields for each row. Now I wanted to talk here at the end of this video quickly about a thing called normalization because it's important when you are planning your uh, SQL tables. If you notice here, every time we've got the OEM One Plus, the website is the same and the HQ is the same. You're not going to have a One Plus that doesn't have that web address or doesn't have that uh, HQ. The same with Google. Google, both Google phones have both got the same uh, URL and the same uh, address, uh, HQ. So actually this data in one sense is redundant because we're repeating the same thing again and again for every OnePlus device. It's not something that changes from one device to another. Things like the processor will change. Things like the display size will change. But this information will be the same every time we have a OnePlus device, every time we have a Google device. So there is a way of actually actually extracting this so that you don't keep repeating it. And actually the same is true of the processor. Every Snapdragon 855 has got the Adreno 640. Every Snapdragon 845 has got the Adreno 630. So when we see another Snapdragon 845 here again, we're repeating that it's got the Adreno 630 in it and we're repeating the number of cores. In this example, they all happen to be eight, but of course there are processors with uh, less than eight cores. So again, we can extract away this information uh, into another table. This is called normal normalization. So what we could actually do is create an OEM table. So this would be a second table, okay, which has just got one plus and its website address and its headquarters. It's got a row for Google and its information. It's got a row for Huawei and its information. Likewise, we could create a processor table which has got the information about the Snapdragon 855, the information about the Snapdragon 845 and so on. And you don't have to keep repeating this information in every single phone that you list inside of your smartphone database. So after you've normalized the data, the table becomes a lot smaller. It says OnePlus, but the HQ and the, uh, the web address are not listed here. 
It says Snapdragon 855, but which GPU that's got is not listed here because those are stored in two different tables. So now we'd have three tables in our database. Now, what I want to show you is, so it, it, it OEM is a common link between those two tables. So if we go back here to the OEM, we can see it's OEM and it says one plus. And when we go to our normalized table, we can see it says OEM and one plus. So this becomes a key. These links this information with the information in the other table so we can get out this information. And likewise, the processor is also a common key. So if we go back here, we can see it lists the Snapdragon 855 and we have a table which lists the Snapdragon 855. So this is now forming a relationship, which is why it's called a relational database, a relationship between these two tables. They've both got entries for the Snapdragon 855, which means they are linked together. And you can actually use the select command in a much more, it's a bit, it is a bit more complicated, but if we just go through this, we can see how you can query two of those tables at the same time. So we're saying select OEM and model and processor. Well, we know those are from the smartphone table, but notice here, I'm also saying I want the GPU. Now, the GPU is no longer listed in our normalized table. It's not there at the top. It's gone into the processor table. There it is, GPU. So what we're saying is I want to get the GPU and I want those from smartphones, okay? But to get that GPU information, I say join onto it some information from the processors table and I want to use the column processor as the link. So where it says Snapdragon 855 in one and it says Snapdragon 855 in the other, please link them together and that will get me the GPU information. So where it sees Snapdragon 855 here, it will use that information as a way into the same field here inside this table and it will be able to fetch out the uh, GPU. So let's actually run that and it's also saying where the RAM is for uh, a gigabyte. So we know that we're gonna get the two pixel devices out but we're also gonna get the GPU even though it's in a different table. So I have a database here that I prepared earlier, which is called Smartphones Norm for Normalize. And if we go into that, if we just quickly do a select OEM uh, model from smartphones, okay, we can see there's our same six smartphones. But now if we do a, a select star from processors, those are our three, four processors, the three Snapdragons and the Kirin. And I can also do a select star from OEMs, okay, and that lists out those. So we can see there are now three tables and the link, of course, is the OEM and the processor. So let's go back to our example SQL like command, our SQL command here where we're using the join and let's just cut and paste that in here now so that we can try that out. There we go. So that's the one I showed earlier. And when we hit it, there we go. The Google Pixel 3 and the 3a, the two Snapdragons, and there the uh, GPU has been gotten out of the other table using, here we go, using the processor as that linkage, as that relationship between them. Now, of course, we could do this as two separate select commands. So we could do uh, select star from uh, processors where uh, processor is equal to uh, Snapdragon 8 four, five with a semicolon at the end. And then here we can see in that table, we've got the GPU there. In fact, we can just select the GPU rather than star. Okay, and that's how we've got that information there. But by using the join, it's actually grabbed that information for us and put it as a row in our resulting table. Now, obviously there's lots more to learn about uh, SQL, lots more that you can uh, go into. This really is a brief introduction, but it just shows you the power of relational databases, rows, columns, tables, how you can use SQL Lite, even inside your Android app, even if you're writing a command line app, or even if you're writing a GUI app for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, you can use SQL Lite and you can create your own database storing all your own data in it. So my name is Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. See you in the next one.